If you were a coach and won the overtime toss, would you take the ball and go for two if we score, or would you kick off and get the ball second? All right, let's bring in Brandon Staley, the Chargers head coach. Coach, I'll start right there with you. You're an analytics guy. Strategy-wise, now with overtime and both teams get the ball, what do you think you're going to be uh, leaning towards if you go into overtime in the postseason? Well, it's good to be with you, Dan. Hopefully you can appreciate that Dayton Flyer helmet in the back of uh, this movie. Looks pretty. Um, really good to be with you. Uh, yeah, it's... By the way, uh, you was- have to join the list of John Gruden and Chuck Knoll as, you know, University of Dayton grads who went on to win a Super Bowl. So no pressure there, but you need to, ju- you know, jump in uh, into that group there. Yeah, or join, you know, guys like Dan Patrick, who have become a sports icon, mm. starting, starting his own show, pioneer, Yeah, you know. Well, that was McVay. Sean McVay was on that list. Sean McVay was going to go into the media, you know, not you. Yeah, his, yeah, McVay claims Dayton through his grandpa, I think. So, but we're going to have to look into that a little bit. But um, yeah, it's. I, I mean, yesterday was a an important day for the league, and there was a lot of really good discussion. I think being a part of the discussions, you see that the the future of the league is really important to the people in it, and there was a lot of um, good dialogue. I think healthy discussion and. Uh, I think that we came to the conclusion that the postseason was where really the, the change needed to be made. And uh, I think that, as, as you saw with the vote, that, um, you know, that there was a you know, really you know, significant support for it. So uh, I think that it is going to change things when you don't have that sudden death element. Um, I do think that there's going to be some you know, different calculation as you head um, into the game. And I think that now when you're guaranteeing both possessions, um, you know, which side of the field you're on, hey, you know, wind you know, that sort of thing, knowing that you are going to get an op, um, you know, it's just like that. It's that information advantage that you have by possibly deferring um, because you don't have that sudden death element. So uh, and I think the thinking is that if uh, you did go down and score and, and, and kick an extra point that, hey, the likelihood of the, the second team going down and not going for two to win it, um, you know, they're saying is, is low. But um, if you did, if it did end up going, you know, score PAT, score PAT, that next score would, would, would finish it. And, and I think that there was just a lot of discussion of, hey, past this initial period, hey, then what's going to happen? Is there, is there still a time element, which there will be? You're going to flip the field and just head in a different direction. So uh, it, was, it was a good resolution. And, and now we're, uh, we're finally headed towards something. Are you OK with the overtime rule in the regular season? Yes. You know, I think, the, you know, our position with the Chargers was that the rules are already different in the postseason uh, as opposed to the regular season. Um, you know, in the regular season, you can end in a tie postseason. You can't. So the rules are already different. And and so we support uh, we support the things staying the way um, it is in, in the regular season. What was your initial reaction when you learned that Tyreek Hill was no longer in the AFC West? Yes, one of those really significant moves that sort of the theme of this offseason. Um, you know, I think defending the guy over the course of these, you know, however long I've been in the NFL, um, he's definitely a dangerous player. One of the most, I think, dangerous weapons that's ever played in the National Football League. Uh, but at the same time, one of the most dangerous players to ever play in the NFL uh, is the guy who was throwing it to him. So <laughs> that, that guy's still that guy's still there. Um, they've got a team, which is the reason why they've been to the AFC Championship game two, three or four years in a row. And so it was a monster move for sure. Um, I've got full respect for him. He's still in the AFC. So uh, we're still going to be running into that guy. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that, you know, Kansas City's resume speaks for itself. And the competition, I think, Dan, what you're seeing is it's, it's as fierce as it's ever been in the league, which is good for the league. I wonder, it felt like the defensive strategy last year against Kansas City was keep everything in front of you. No home run plays. And really, you would give Mahomes – 10, 12, 15 yards, you're just not going to give him that opportunity to break something big. And it seemed to frustrate him. It, it, is the league, do you think that was a kind of a philosophy there, group philosophy going against Kansas City? Well, I think everyone, you know, has been searching for, for several years a formula that can work for them. Um, and there aren't too many good ones, that's for sure. Uh, but I think, you know, you just got to take into consideration who they have over there, uh, who's, who's throwing the football, and, and kind of how he plays and then who those weapons are he's throwing to. I mean, starting with Tyreek and Travis, you know, those are two of the best players at their positions in the history of the game and kind of how they play off schedule 
with Pat, who's such a dangerous thrower on the move and he's accurate in the deep part of the field on the move. Um, and, you know, kind of the miraculous really isn't that big of a miracle with him because he does it all the time. Uh, and then they just got a lot of team speed elsewhere outside of those three players. So I think um, that certainly was a strategy, but I think that's probably too, uh, too vague of, uh, of a way of describing it um, because you still got to be connected with these guys. If you're playing zone, um, these guys are, you know, he's going to throw for 80 to 90 percent. He'll throw for 450 or 500. Um, you may it may take him longer to score, but he's still going to score. So you, you have to still decide how you're going to play the game. And um, but again, that's why, what makes them such a challenging cover. What did you learn in your first year that might surprise me? I think that uh, in my first year, I think the way I describe it is that everything was happening for the first time all the time. So if you can imagine that every day, something's happening to you for the first time. Um, and I think that a lot of people would say like, hey, is that is that stressful? You know, and I would say my response to that was I, I felt like it was energizing because I knew how good I needed to be every single day in order to make those improvements. And um, I think that I got a lot better from the first time I think I interviewed with you when I got hired to, to this interview. Uh, I know how much I've improved and I know how much better I am uh, in my own game. Um, but that first year went by fast. Everybody said that it would. And I think uh, for that reason that I mentioned, uh, that, that was a big contributing factor. But also you're getting in front of the media after a tough loss. Whereas when you were a coordinator, you don't have to talk to the media. What's that like? You lose a game, gather your thoughts, and then go get peppered with questions. Well, I think it was like when I was playing at quarterback, you kind of have that responsibility if it doesn't go down, you know? And, and so I think that, having played that position that that kind of uniquely prepares you growing up being a, a quarterback and a point guard, uh, you're kind of faced when it doesn't go down that, that everyone's looking at you. So um, I think that um, there was, you know, that finality when you lose in the NFL, I think um, being in the NFL, you see it, you see, uh, and everyone talks about it that way, but I think being the head coach and knowing that, Hey, you're responsible for a lot, a lot of people forget, forget, you know, um, the game itself, but just the people that were playing in the game and the people, your fans, who this means so much for, um, you're accountable for that. And, and it's, a, it's a great responsibility. And that's why when you go in front of the media after a tough game, you know, you have to be on, you know, to make sure that um, you do your best to explain what happened and to the best of your ability. And, and that's what I try to do this year. I ask about your impressions uh, when Tyree Kill left the AFC West, your uh, initial reaction when Russell Wilson joined the AFC West? Yeah, I mean, competition is fierce. And I think that, um, you know, I've, I've played against Russell a lot in my NFL career, watched him uh, throughout his whole career. I mean, going back to NC State, Wisconsin, um, you know, he's, he's one of the tremendous players at that position in, uh, in the NFL. And uh, when I was with the Rams, we had to face him three times in one season and, and twice in three weeks uh, at the end of the season. So, uh, it just again, it's it's special for the league, uh, and and he's one of those players that plays you know one of the most important positions in sports. So uh, I think it, it it's going to bring out the best in everybody for sure. Does Sean McVay rub it in that he's got a Super Bowl ring? Does he just you know does he send you a, a text or something, or when he sees you, hey, I want you to address me as Super Bowl winning coach, anything like that? No, nah, Sean's too uh, too humble to do that, and, and he knows better than to do that. Uh, but um, no, he he would never do something like that because he the game, you know how you do things <laughs> matters to him. Um, He's you know, got to have fun with you though, Brandon. No, nah, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't go there because um, uh, you know we play him this year, so uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but um, no, Sean. Uh, Sean deserves everything that he that he's um, achieved, and including this year, he was fantastic. He did a really good job coaching that team, and that's what I told him. You know, I just told him I was like, I thought you did a really good job coaching your team because people talk about the end and kind of their players who they joined up with, but there was a stretch there in the middle where I don't think anyone was predicting that the Rams yeah. uh, were going to make it to victory lane, and um, that's the sign of an organization that um, that's that's built to last to be able to respond to a tough stretch, and and that's what they did. Who do you get mistaken for? <laughs> Man, damn that that I don't know if I was ready for that one. Um, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't well, you're know in that. L.A. I mean, did you ever been mistaken identity for an actor? 
Uh, I don't know. I, I've gotten some Johnny Knoxville comps in the past. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, there was like a, a time there. Um, you know, I kind of, you know, and I'm the same age as Matt Liner, uh, who, you know, former quarterback. Uh, you know, but um, those are two names that have been thrown out there in okay. the past. I don't know how accurate they are. Right. Um, and then, you know, throughout the year, I was getting peppered with these questions about this Ted Lasso guy. So um, I haven't watched that show yet, but I'm, I'm told that I need to. So Amy and I may join up with that show here soon. I kind of see Peter Brady from the Brady Bunch. You know what, Dan, now that you mentioned that, I've heard about that. And again, <laughs> that was kind of before my time. <laughs> Uh, which probably dates me a little bit um, on the youthful side, but I, I didn't join up with that show as a young kid. So, well, if you Google Peter Brady, you might go, okay, I, I yeah, he's yeah, got a point. It's yeah, not, a, it's not it. an insult. It's not an insult. Uh, yeah, that was a successful show. Now. Yes, it was. Right. Yes, it was. Uh, and Johnny Knoxville, I could see that. You even have the the voice kind of raspy in there. I could see that. Get those glasses on. I could see that. Maybe bring yeah, Johnny, Johnny Knoxville good- to practice. Johnny had a great run, man. He's still doing it. Yes, so he is. Got a lot of respect for that guy. Hey, great to talk to you. Enjoy the off season. Good luck in the draft, and uh, always great to visit with you. Thanks, Dan, for having me. That's uh, Brandon Staley, Chargers head coach.